Alexander Rowe in the Motec machine is going to lead him to the green flag. Speaking of green, it's AJ Green heading the outside line in the number 55. AJ's only got seven points to his name at this point and is tied with Jack Legacy for dead last 83rd slash 84th in points. So let's see if he can improve his status today. That's John. That's not John King, just kidding. That's Al Lagacy in the number 01 on the bottom of the race tr track in that Duluth car. Jeffrey Fingai having a solid run to start the day in the yellow and black ruby paint scheme. And Kyle Collins up to third. Four wide for around 15th place. That's Lester, Hankins, Lethanen, and Davidson. Uh, all side by side. They somehow managed to sort it out. There are a bunch of cars into the wall there. I believe that's either Will Hoyt or Nelson into the wall as well as Hankins. Ooh, Hartono and Lethen in there. They made some contact up there. But uh, Mark Hankins looking for a good race. Not sure. I don't think he's had too good of a season uh, so far. Lester, on the other hand, has done okay so far. Finished in the top. Uh, Finished on the podium actually back at Brass Darn Art, heading to a road course for another couple of rounds. So uh, let's see what Lester can do on uh, these short ovals. Kyle Collins in the 48 has since taken over the lead. Last time he was in the lead was back at race number two in Brass Town Bald, where he had a mechanical failure, devastating for that team. They, they looked to have the strongest car of the day there uh, in, uh, in race number one. In Georgia. Uh, Jeffrey Fingai still hanging right with him and the cautions out first caution of the race is Henrietta Fitzwater just got by Al Lagacy for third. PJ Williams is trying to get uh, by a few drivers. Bill Littlejohn in the 30 just in front of him moves up a line so the 26 tries to get it but Littlejohn gets loose there and sends Williams into the inside wall very reminiscent of the Prudence Little John William Duncan accident uh, back in race number one. That will take PJ Williams out of the race and everyone else manages to get by unscathed. Pace car back in and it's Collins Finguy Legacy, the front three as we head back to the green flag. Uh, I made a mistake there on the taking of the yellow. Fitzwater did not get third apparently. Uh, James Shelley back there in fifth. Uh, I think he had a solid qualifying run in that number 12 and that's why he's up here. Hasn't charged too, through too many cars so far. As here comes Al Legacy for the race lead on Collins. Thought Fingai was going to go after it there but uh, Fingai caught sleeping there a little bit on the restart and Legacy passed Fingai and Collins in the those opening laps to uh, grab the lead. Collins might get it back here though as Legacy slid a little bit too wide. Uh, Fingai loses yet another position to Fitzwater in the number 61. Spencer Fullerton trying to move up some spots. He's got progressively better at short tracks over the course of his career, but we've got a crash there out of turn number four. Sekuli's on his roof and we're sacking him up big time. That was more of a chain reaction than anything. Carter came down into Michaels, who came down into Fullerton, and then Sekuli ended up getting collected there. He drove into that corner awfully hard, and after that, uh, drivers just stacked it in there. Sekuli, Littlejohn, Jones, and Roush appear to have gotten the worst of it. Roush, Sekuli, Hankins, Littlejohn, McGovern, and Lester all out of the race from the stack up in turn number four. Pace car about to come in and we're about to go back to the restart for the second time today. That's Fitzwater up into second in the number 61. She's been awfully strong here today. Was one of the strongest drivers in the Heart Canada series. So not too much of a surprise to see her doing well here, even though this is a track that I don't think Fitzwater's ever been to. So uh, impressive job by the Aussie driver there. Fingai trying to get by Collins as Andreas Allen and Shelly stack him in behind and Fitzwater to the race lead after one lap of green flag. That's uh, Al Lagacy moving in the wrong direction. Shifted up to the high side there to uh, try and let Fitzwater go and he's now stuck up there. That's Fingai gone by him. Shelly as well. 
John Gambit started fourth, fell back a little bit at the start, but now he's making his way to the front in a real hurry. He's generally not much of a short tracker, even though he started driving at what I assume was uh, his local track in North Dakota. Didn't have the best of luck in the Hark USA Tour, but uh, really showing some speed so far today. Up to second now and uh, charging after Fitzwater. Despite winning in Homestead, Miami, Matthew Engelram is currently back in 20th in points. Uh, due, I imagine, a lot to uh, his finish at Brasstown Bald, which was dead last. He had a mechanical failure on the first lap of the race. But uh, looking better today. He's up to 8th place. Just got by Andreas Allen and Joshua Michaels. Michaels hoping today goes better than last year where he ended his race on uh, the back straightaway there. Uh, Alexander Rowe continuing to lose a few spots. Looked like he was going to charge his way forward, but he might have gone through his tires too quick. And, well, we don't exactly plan on having pit stops necessarily in this race. If we got a ca caution, he might want to think about it. But uh, Rowe just looking to hold on, it appears, at the moment. Wes Jones trying to go to the front in a hurry. He's up into the top 20 already, despite that rear end damage and being involved in an accident around 20 or so laps ago. Uh, shove Viznovsky out of line. He looks like he's going to get that spot. Next on his list is Lasavich. Uh, Jones felt really good about his chances heading into this race. Uh, he was really fast in practice. Got a lot of tips from his teammate Tyler Faber, who uh, has some experience here from the 2016 season. And uh, didn't really exactly have the qualifying effort to back that up, but uh, seems to be really throwing it down here, despite uh, the fact that aerodynamics should be working against him. Zayden Davidson was in the middle of a hard race with Sam Curtis when uh, she reported to her crew that it, there was a tire going down. You can see Davidson just struggling to get it through the corner at any speed at all. He needs to get down to the bottom of the racetrack in order to pit, but Hartono's there and nowhere to go there as Davidson goes for a quick little spin. Tivia Kingray narrowly avoids, really should have gone on the brakes a little harder than he did, but uh, Davidson successfully gets it on the pit road and we're under yellow. Fitzwater still with the lead on the restart, although his seconds wide gap that he had over Collins and the rest of the field is, well, now decimated. Uh, Collins still sitting there in second. Might go for a pass on the inside there as Fitz Fitzwater botched up the restart there, but Collins gets really loose. And has to save it down the back straightaway. Phenomenal save by uh, Collins, the uh, driver out of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, that's Lagacy up his inside, but Gambit is there as well with help from Mitchell Carter, who's really driven himself up through the field. He's up to into the top five now past Shelley. A lot of the attention of the fans has been diverted to the midfield, though, and for good reason. These guys are all over the place. A lot of them um, don't appear to have the most stable race cars. That's they were trying to get by. McIntyre Crassie gets loose for this second corner in a row. Jesus. Uh, Jack Legacy in the 18 by the 21 on the inside. AJ Green here as well. Both of the top, uh, both of the bottom two, rather, as Matt McIntyre takes a slice out of the wall there. And the eight of Henry Williams to the apron trying to make a pass on Mike Viznovsky. It looks like he's going to do it amazingly. Thought that would have really unsettled the 8HW car, but uh, he's on his way. Uh, Denzel Williams uh, trying to make his way through some cars. Like Wes Jones, was very confident heading into this race. Uh, was up there with Jones uh, topping the uh, speed charts in practice, but uh, in quality, just... I, I don't know what, what it was with quality. I think the racetrack was a little bit hotter than these guys were anticipating, but uh, uh, qualifying was certainly a lot different than practice. Top four still single file behind Fitzwater, though Carter has now cracked into the top three. Race is on, though, for fifth place. Three wide there out at corner number four. That's Shelley, 
Lagacy and Gambit stuck up the outside. Lefinen's going to keep him up there out of turn number two. Ooh, Gambit about an inch and a half or two off of the wall. And Lagacy's going to hold on to sixth. Shelly up into fifth. You got a feel for Epic Flintstones racing. They've had no luck the last couple of rounds. Both Flintstone and Nozomi fell out of the race back in Concord. And again, things not looking too good for that team. Fred Flintstone out due to an engine issue in race number one, despite the fact that he's foot power. I don't, no one knows, it, it's fine. But uh, Nozomi at the tail end of the field, even behind those with significant damage from previous accidents. Uh, speaking of accidents, we've got a caution on the speedway. Curtis and Harvey appear to be involved. Michael Harvey already with a lot of rear end damage from a previous accident. Thomas chases him all the way up the racetrack. Harvey into the wall. Thomas, I did not expect that, gets loose, comes down the racetrack and takes Curtis with her. It wasn't Harvey that was spun out on the inside. It was uh, Thomas, my, my mistake there. They're kind of similar looking cars, except not really. Not sure what I was, not sure what I saw there, to be honest. Fitzwater back to the green flag as we head on to lap number 70 of 125. This race, a really grueling one for these drivers. Longest race of the year, I think, as far as lap count. And we're not even at the shortest track of the year. There's three tracks shorter, uh, all of them half milers. This one just over a half mile in length. So a lot of time for these guys to make their way through the field, but a lot of time to remain consistent and out front. That's what Fitzwater's got to keep on doing if, if she's going to go home uh, with, uh, with the trophy at the end of this thing. Carter, in the meanwhile, though, has made it up into second place. Alexander Rowe now appears back inside the podium. Bit of a surprise there, nearly a wreck, and there is a wreck back there. That's Shelly and Gambit. A couple of cars that were doing really well are collected in that one. Restarts are prime time as far as making passes. Gambit a little bit too overzealous, as well as Leffen in there, who uh, didn't exactly help things by pushing Gambit up the track. But uh, Shelly and Gambit now both have quite a bit of damage, especially Gambit to his front end there. But they're both allowed to get back into their positions. I'm sure that won't be too favorable amongst a lot of the drivers, but that's just how it works with um, with the race back to the line rule as Gambit tries to uh, get back in front of Shelly. They don't appear too happy with one another. Driving a little bit aggressively under caution as Shelly just got into Gambit there a little bit. Got to be careful. Uh, officials going to have to take a look at that one later on potentially. Fitzwater back to the green. Carter still in second, but another good shot here on the restart. Uh, Fitzwater again just can't seem to get those tires heated enough to uh, keep the low side protected on these uh, on these restarts but still having a good go of it there he's he, he, she's holding on to the lead as best as she can and just held off Carter who nearly got into Fitzwater similar to uh, Gambit and Shelley's incident just a few laps earlier but Fitzwater off into the distance now, about five or ten car lengths in front of Alexander Rowe, who's going to grab second from uh, Mitchell Carter, it looks like. Despite the damage, James Shelley does appear to still be fairly on pace, has lost a few uh, positions, but that seemed to be more due to getting stuck on the outside than anything left in it into the wall there. As Shelley going after Michaels for that spot, sliding up the track, and, well... That's not how to get back to the front. Shelly a little bit overzealous there. And Al Lagacy with quite a bit of damage to the 01 car. Everyone else manages to check up in time. Oh, Fullerton with a pretty damaged front end as well. Might see him go out of the race. James Shelly will join Zayden Davidson as the only two cars. One lap down. Al Lagacy out of the race due to that accident. He, he was already near the bottom of the points along with his teammate Jack Lagacy, and he looks like he's going to join him at the dead bottom after this race, especially with how Jack is doing. Jack is uh, around 30th right now. 
As the caution's already back out, I believe I forgot to mention under the last yellow that Freddy Munoz went out of the race due to a broken camshaft. Let's see what happened. Not surprisingly, considering how things have been going, Nozomi had just gotten by a few cars, but then proceeded to get turned by Michael Harvey. Of course it was Nozomi <laughs> that got turned, and that will collect Ali Nelson, who now has front and rear end damage. Congratulations. You're now balanced. And caution out yet again. Nozomi delegated to the extreme rear of the pack yet again. That Fitzwater is not too pleased with all these yellows coming out. Just keeps restacking up the field when Fitzwater just wants to drive away like he's been doing for the last few times. And it gives them chances like this. Fitzwater pushed all the way to the top side of the racetrack, three wide there, and it looks like finally someone's going to be able to make the pass. It's Mitchell Carter in the 80 to the race lead. Sylvian LaSavage out of nowhere as well. He's into the podium spot in the number 88, now trying to get second from the 61 of Fitzwater, and looks like he's going to get that what? I I'm sorry, d d do I see a mangled rear end in the top four? That must be Wes Jones. Good old Westby there in the 404. He hates that name. My God. Fitzwater damn near turned the 88 down to the inside. Could you not? Okay, thanks. But uh, Viznovsky by Fitzwater into the wall. Man, he, he's, she's really been struggling ever since she got past. And I mean, for good reason. Uh, hasn't really had to deal with too much of this traffic. So uh, I imagine the dirty air is a, a bit of a surprise to Fitzwater, who, who's been stuck in clean air. I say stuck, but uh, been more like blessed with clean air for the majority of the race. Robert Piet, for once, doing something this season in the number 82. The 2016 Hart champion has had a pretty unnotable season to this point, but uh, I believe he did fairly well at Jennerstown last year and looking to do well again, trying to make his way into the top five. Gets loose as, as West gets into the wall. Sylvian Lasavage just got by Carter for the race lead around a lap or so ago, but Carter's still hounding the 88 quite heavily. AJ Green, how? How are you up into third again? He disappeared off of pretty much, I think, everybody's radar after falling through the field uh, after the initial start, but... Uh, now back into a podium spot, so really impressive job by uh, by AJ there in the 55 to uh, get back up through the field. Caution though, once again, caution's really breeding cautions here. Robert Piet trying to get by Mike Viznovsky, but he's got Jokey Leffen and all over him. Wes Jones takes an unconventional line, but man, he's got to run off the corner. Oh boy. Well... Stewards are going to have to take a look at that one, but uh, nice job, Westby. Absolutely annihilated the 82 there heading into one. Hit the ambulance gate. Luckily, there was a there appeared to be a safer barrier there, but both Piet and uh, Jones, as well as appears Andreas Allen and Jack Lagacy of all people, did not deserve to be in that one, but he's out of the race as well. Let's take another look. Taking a look from another angle, Piet just got a terrible exit to the corner, and I don't really understand that. He, he, he was in Jones's line, clearly. It's not like Piet really caught up into the 404 or anything, but uh, Andreas and Hank uh, and Legacy just barely clipped Piet, and that will take all four of those drivers out of the race. And so I'm going to let Piet know that I want to apologize to him. But that was a really dumb move on my part, and I shouldn't have done that at all. Mike Viznovsky has a camshaft go on him under caution. Real shame. Made it up to 7th and really had to fight his way up to that spot. But alas, it looks like he's going to have to wait till Pocono to uh, see if he can get a solid top 5 run completely different top three than the last restart. It's Carter, LaSavage, and AJ Green occupying the podium spots. Perhaps not for long, though. That's Angle Ram looking for the spot on Green, but gets very, very loose off of turn number two. Might have to hold, just barely hold on to fourth for now. 
Here comes AJ Green with a pass. Uh, trying to go for the pass on Carter, but Carter manages to get back down to the low line and actually passes LaSavage to retake the race lead. Awesome move by by Carter in the 80 to get back by LaSavage. Thought the 88 might have been able to pull away there with how they were racing. Alas, not the case though, as Engelram has now made it into second. Fitzwater still no, no real presence at the front. Restarted eighth, made his way back up to fourth, but now back into around seventh. Under 15 to go, and look who's coming back to the front. It's Henrietta Fitzwater in the number 61. Currently has the most laps led of this race, uh, up at around 70 or so. So far, so she's got that bonus locked up for sure, but. She's going to have a fight on her hands, certainly more than she did earlier, to uh, try and get this race win. Mitchell Carter still holds on to the lead. That's LaSavage looking equally as strong as Fitzwater charging back through the pack in the Dodge Challenger. Top three still knows the tail. Around 10 or so laps to go. Here comes Fitzwater with a move on the number 80. The caution's out, racing back to the line. It's going to be Fitzwater getting the lead back at the last possible second. Lasavage is in third. Carter uh, is going to be pushed back into second, though. James Shelley and Michael Harvey racing hard, even though they're not on the same lap. Shelley got loose off of the corner. Checked up there and Harvey had nowhere to go but to turn the number 12 around. Shelley back going without any damage. That's the second car Harvey's turned on the back straight, although that one arguably wasn't his fault. Well, just six laps remain in this Jenner's Town event, but wouldn't say that the winner is confirmed in the slightest. Fitzwater did manage to pull away quite heavily there on the restart. Has had a lot of practice with getting restarts right and really nailed that one it looks like. Lasavage though is stronger than a lot of the cars that Fitzwater had in her mirrors earlier on. Just got by Mitchell Carter it back into second and now going after the 61. If the caution flies we're gonna have another green white checkered like Concord and they're racing pretty hard back there. Lasavage just got a really good run off of turn four. Fitzwater was worried about the bump and run and left the door open for the 88. Here comes Lasavage up the inside. The Montreal native trying to get his first ever win in Park. Mitchell Carter might be able to get second, but Fitzwater with a good drive off the corner. Try, might try and clear Carter down into the corner to have another go at Lasavage before this event ends. Rowe in fourth, Lefanen in fifth, but Lasavage pulling away by about five car lengths over Carter, but runs it a little bit wide there. And we're, st oh, yellow's out. As we were coming to two to go, we are gonna have to go to a green white checkered to settle this one. And uh, it's sure not over. Spencer Fullerton has been trying to limp home the heavily damaged number 73 machine. Got a little loose off the corner, came down in front of Shelly there a little bit. Shelly appeared to hit the brakes, but uh, wasn't able to get it stopped in time. Fullerton hard into the inside wall. Smoke billowing from the number 73, and that will end the, the day for the uh, Phoenix Motorsports entry. Not sure why I didn't just bring it down pit road there. That's going to add some cleanup time to... Uh, to the red flag period between now and the green white checkered. Pace car is in, 23 cars lined up before this green white checkered. It's LaSavage and Carter gonna lead them back. But LaSavage really butchers the restart in the number 88, spun his tires there. Here comes Mitchell Carter up the outside, needs to get down to the inside if he's gonna make a pass. Uh, the outside has not been the way to go to overtake this entire race, but Rowe pushes him to the race lead. That's Lethanen and Williams making contact back there. Lethanen got into the wall and that held up the inside line. Here comes Fitzwater up the inside of Lasavage and they're three wide coming to the white flag. Lasavage trying to come back up the middle line with some help from Rowe. Rowe now goes down to the bottom and it's Fitzwater. 
with the lead out of turn number one, held it down there perfectly and is gone with a five car length lead over Rowe and Guerra out of nowhere up into a podium spot. Michaels racing with Lasavage and Carter nowhere to be found, but it's going to be Henrietta Fitzwater making her way back to the front just in time to claim the race victory after leading the most laps in this one. Alexander Rowe started on pole, faded a little bit, came back to the front and was able to get second there at the end. Really solid job by Rowe there. Guerra out of nowhere, like I said, to finish third in the number 97. Michaels finishes fourth, did not see him up into the top five until those last couple of laps. Lasavage falls to fifth, real, a real shame for the Montreal native. I'm sure he was looking for more on that green-white checker, but alas, it wasn't to be for him. Jokey Lethanen recovers from hitting the inside wall on the first lap of that green-white checker to finish sixth. Mitchell Carter falls to seventh after leading at the white flag. That's rough. Matthew Engelram finishes eighth, uh, his second best finish of the year. As Taylor Price in the 35 went, uh, went under the radar most of the day, finishes ninth. And Annie Thomas recovers from her earlier struggles to uh, get a top ten.